Hi everyone, Frank Halverson here for this week's KVGC Les Schwab Tire Pigskin Preview. When we come back, we'll look at last week's action as well as look at the games this week in the last league matchups heading into playoffs, so stay tuned. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks! Thanks for not just selling me tires. Thanks for running out to my car to greet me. Like, running, running. Thanks for checking my brakes for free! For fixing my plan for free! And being just hassle-free. For talking to me like an intelligent human being. You don't see that too often. Thanks for hustling to get me out of there. Without making me feel hustled. So thanks. Thanks. <sighs> thanks for doing the right thing by not just selling me tires. Welcome. Les Schwab Tires. Doing the right thing matters. Well, last week, Argonaut traveled over to Sonora trying to do something that no one in the Mother Load League has been able to do in three years, and that's defeat the Wildcats. Well, that didn't happen. Sonora started out quick finding the end zone. Josh Harris scampered in from the eight, and with the two-point conversion just like that, Sonora had a quick eight-to-nothing lead. After forcing, Am or after forcing Amador or Argonaut to punt, Harris went back to work finding Kane Rogers for a 76-yard pitch and catch, and Sonora had a 16 to nothing lead. Well, then Johnny White would put the Mustangs on the board with a 41-yard burst of his own, and at the end of one, it was Sonora 16, Argonaut 6. Argonaut would move the ball well in the second quarter, but just could not turn it into points. They missed a couple field goals, and all of a sudden that kicking game with their strong kicker is really struggling. They missed an extra point in this game, they missed two field goals, and they're really going to need to get that turned around for the playoffs. So midway through the third, Canapa would finish off a 17-play drive, and this just was really the killer for the Mustangs. 75 yards took nine minutes off the clock, and that was pretty much doomed the Mustangs. Argonaut would score again with 12 seconds left in the game, but the final score was Sonora 23, Argonaut 12. Now, the interesting statistic about this game, other than the two quick touchdowns that Sonora had, the Mustangs outgained the Wildcats. The Mustangs had 308 yards against Sonora's 253, but they just couldn't convert it into points. Well, this week, Sonora travels to Bret Hart, and Argonaut will be at home for a non-league matchup with Dixon. That will be our game of the week. Well, speaking of Bret Hart, they punched their ticket to the playoffs. They did it three weeks ago. I said that Bret Hart needed to win two of their last three games in order to make the playoffs. Well, they did with a 55-7 drubbing of Linden. Bret Hart scored 27 points in the first quarter and 28 in the second for a 55 to nothing halftime lead led by their big running back, the sophomore, Anthony Howard. Hunter White would find the end zone for Linden for the final score, 55-7. to Well, over at Calaveras, it was homecoming, and Somerville was hoping to spoil the party. Somerville, listen to this stat. Somerville has only beaten Calaveras one time, one time since 1954 on Calaveras home turf. And tonight would be no different. Now, the interesting thing, the game was almost canceled as Frank Meyer Field flooded due to the rain. Water was up to the hash marks on both sides of the field. And as the rain subsided, they were able to get some pumps out there and cleared all the standing water from the field. Well, who better to steer the ship on a flooded night then Noah, that's Calaveras running back Noah Pruce. Pruce had 94 yards and two touchdowns in the first half alone. Gian Gregorio would find the end zone for the second score, then Pruce again from 20 yards out. Logan Weatherby would get his first varsity touchdown in just his third game. A sophomore was just called up to the varsity, and he got his first action. The varsity level scored a touchdown for his homecoming memory. Fulkerson would account for the lone Somerville score with a 90-yard run, followed by two more Calavera scores, one by Josie's and the other by Norton. Final score, Calaveras 41, Somerville 7. Well, this week, Somerville travels to Amador, and Calaveras plays Linden in a game that will have no effect at all on the playoff picture for any of the teams. Somerville is out. They cannot make the playoffs. Well, our game of the week last Friday was Amador hosting the Yosemite Badgers. Amador would come away with a 35-7 victory. Amador would score first on a 34-yard run by Thedford. At the end of one, it was 6-0 Buffaloes. 
Well, early in the second quarter, Thedford would find the end zone again, this time from 10 yards out to up the score to 12. Reese Gilmore would then join the party with a touchdown of his own, and this time the extra point was good, and Amador led 19 to nothing. Yosemite would finally get on the board with an Ames to Marino touchdown right before the half, and then Thedford would close out the half with his third score of the night um, from the two, and Amador was up at halftime 26-7. to Well, both teams were scoreless in the second half until 40 seconds left in the game, and Thedford would find the end zone one more time for his first touch, fourth touchdown of the night, final score, Amador 35, Yosemite 7. This week, as I said, Amateur hosts Somerville with real no meaning at all for the standings and, well, possibly could have standings. If Amateur were to lose and Calaveras were to win, they would tie for second place, but really no effect on the playoffs. Now, as far as the playoffs go, here's what we know. Sonora and Calaveras are both in, in Division Four. We'll see what the seedings are announced uh, after this game this Friday and who's going to play who. In Division Six, Amador is in. Argonaut is in, Brett Hart is in. Now, what they do in the first uh, the first round, they try not to have teams that played each other in league to meet in the first round. So that probably won't happen in the second round if the mother lead teams can get by round one. I'm guessing Bradshaw Christian is going to be seated number one. I think Amador will be number two. I think Brett Hart's going to be number eight. So they're going to have to travel to Brett, Bradshaw Christian. And I think Argonaut's probably going to be six or five. They wouldn't be seven because then they would line up against Amador in the first round. And like I said, they try to avoid that. So I'm going to guess that Argonaut's going to come in at in the, either the five or the six spot. That means they're going to be on the road somewhere. Amador should have a home game. The top four teams in the bracket will have a home game. The bottom four teams will travel. Eight teams in Division Six bracket for the playoffs. So that's the, how they're shaping up so far. We've got one more week of action. Remember, this week we're going to be at Argonaut for Argonaut game of the week for a non-league game versus Dixon. We hope you're with us and stay tuned for next week's pigskin preview as we talk about the matchups for the playoffs.